Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another gameplay video. This time we've got myself on the bottom playing my mono yellow go tanks, which is on the Patreon at the moment. If you guys aren't following the Age of Go Tanks article series, you guys definitely should. And on the top side of the screen, we have my friend and patron James playing mono green raditz. Now, this is a deck that has become kind of like low-key popular now that there's like the green Vegeta super combo it can search and a lot of the green unison stuff. And the leader doesn't really just do anything with red green it really just doesn't it's uh, very good as a mono green leader because a lot of the good mono green cards apply to it and it's a hand control deck so it's a bit more generic in the sense of like the mono green freeze structure deck stuff but you do miss out on some of those cards but you can play some other really powerful cards like the vegeta super combo and whatnot so we're getting started with this gameplay unfortunately i don't have a turn one play not the worst thing in the world because i do have my my uh, gogeta for turn two paired with the dispo so that feels really really good now james is going to search for his raditz one drop which does add up to a lot of draws later in the game so very good card especially in a deck like this he's going to attack i'm going to warp bergamo take a life sand instincts exactly what we want to see against hand control so that's pretty good he's going to pass on playing the raditz now he is playing a mono green deck he is playing that raditz he will never be able to use the activate main we were talking about it He'll never be able to resolve the activate main. He doesn't play red. He doesn't play any Nappas. But it is there for the Bardock that you see in his energy. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. He just needs one drop green cards for his Bardock effects. So we get the free play crit. And now this is really good because I'm on play. So it's pretty hard for him to answer it. And look at that. I crit a drop area in the gate. What a, what a lucky coincidence. But anyways, I had the 15k crit. It's pretty hard for him to answer it because he can't warp cards out of my hand unless he attacks... Um, with his leader towards my leader. So with that being the case, the Dispo is going to be pretty good value for a few turns here unless he has some type of two drop to answer it. But he really won't unless he has like his, his Bardock Unison. So we'll see if he gets that far. So I'm going to draw two off of my Gogeta here. Oh, but yeah, you also have to assume that he has the Bardock since he charged turn one because it's one of the main playmakers in his deck. So I'm assuming he definitely has one. Yeah, okay. He probably has a third Bardock because there's no other reason why you would charge two of them unless you had the third one. Although he's got to be he's got to be pretty confident that the one Bardock he plays won't die. That's a very very uh interesting bet to take. But it does knock out a combo once per turn. So I mean, I guess it is relatively easy to save itself in that sense. So he is going to go Bardock into Dispo. Exactly what I did not want to see. I don't think I have enough for sparking, so I can't time magic, which I probably would in this case if I had the sparking. I'll warp a time magic. I'll take a damage. We get Basil, and it's kind of unfortunate. He's like one card off of me using the activate main. That'd be really sweet because it would allow me to clear his Bardock with, with like relative ease. But unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. I do have another Dispo I can play for free, though. That's pretty cool. I really like this Dispo Gogeta combo, especially in the mono yellow version. I play six two drop unisons. So it ends up working out really well. First thing we're gonna do with our energy, we're gonna play the Sand Instincts just to see what we get. We see the one of Makikabora. It is a one of that I play. I think in I think in Shadow Dragons it's really really good because one it helps you flip and two you you are playing a really slow control deck. In this deck though, I mean Gogeta is everything you need. He gives you the energy boost. I mean the power boost. Gives you the filter. So I really don't often find myself playing Makikabora, but it is a one of I do have in the deck, and it's a pretty easy ditch off of Gogeta if I need to ditch something. So we're going to attack into Bardock, flip to do the damage. We're going to go crit at leader here. Because at this point, I'm pretty confident I can remove the Bardock this turn. We do have the U9 Assemble open because he is tapped out. This card is, I mean, just so good when you're on the play or on the draw. Like, you know, going second, if you don't have your Unison, you still get a lot of value off of that. Going first, I have my Unison established and he's tapped out on two. He does have the Frieza Counterplay, which is very, very good for James. So that hurts me a bit. I am going to play the Basil. Now, he has a fifth card on the field. So I have an option here. I have an option here to rest his Gogeta. Uh, sorry, his Frieza. And then activate main Basil. That will help me get rid of his Bardock. And it is kind of neg to do it because I have to use a super combo. But I have a lot more cards than he has already. I have Saiyan Instincts, so I'm not necessarily hurting for card advantage. The super combo... I already have another one in my hand. I mean, using it here 
seems good because his Bardock will just snowball out of control if I let it go uncontested. So we're going to activate main on the Basil. We are going to go for the attack on the on the Unison and the attack on the Frieza. So I actually just cleared a lot of his resources and his deck definitely needs the Unison on the board to work. So I think at this point, James might be regretting charging those two copies of Bardock, but I think he was more expecting me to use Raider's Warcry to remove it. Uh, but unfortunately, well, not, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but I can't do that play because I know what Bardock does and Raider's Warcry just doesn't do anything against Bardock because it just knocks a combo out once per turn. So pretty important and convoluted stuff to know there. I warp the Basil because I can, I can only control one Basil on the field. So no reason to keep extra copies. He's going to play Vegeta, make me discard, play another Vegeta, make me discard. I will discard Sand Instincts and possibly another copy of Basil, but I think it's going to be this Chompa. Yep, it's the Chompa. I have the Celzino Wincon, so I don't necessarily need Chompa. Looks like James gets a draw one or draw two out of that. I kind of missed what, what happened right there. Okay, he gets a draw two off of the second one. So he's stockpiling some advantage here. He did he did awaken on tap one, draw one. So that's how he's able to play several one drops right there. He is tapped out though. That's a little bit of a dangerous territory. He doesn't have too many options in his hand. I mean, I don't really have too many options in my hand either, but I do have a somewhat established board, which is pretty nice. So we're going Dispo Crit at the leader. We decide to combo in Warcry because I want to if I want to either make him use the super combos or tap them so they're unusable. So he's gonna opt to combo off both the super combos to get the draws. That actually puts him at a higher card parity than me, which, uh, you know, it was the right play by James for sure to use them and not just have it get rested and cleared. So we're gonna go tanks into leader. At this point, the Vegeta Unison can be a solid game ender in the next turn or two, so we'll see if that comes up. I am working my way towards Celzino though. So he's gonna negate and pop the Dispo. Gogeta's gonna swing. I'm not killed on this turn, so might as well just clear the resource he has on the board. So we're gonna activate Gogeta, we're actually gonna pitch the Vegeta and we're gonna pitch the Bardock. We're fully playing for Celzino here. Hopefully we can get to it. This is pretty cool. I have Unite Assemble online again. It could be the play. Looks like it is the play. Draw two, play a guy against hand control. That's straight value to me. So at this point, I'm basically forcing... Uh, I'm basically forcing James to play things before attacking. Because, you know, I have the Chapil on the board. The Chapil says when he attacks, I get to tap one of his energy once per turn. Honestly, I probably should not have attacked with Chapil there. That was probably a misplay. I should have kept it in active mode because, again, like I mentioned before, I wasn't going to kill him this turn. So, in all honesty, I should have kept it in active mode so he can't remove it as easily. But Raditz still has to attack a leader to make me warp. And here comes the most broken card in the game, the Metacooler Terrifying Horror. This card is... I, I was joking kind of when I said most broken card in the game, but this card is so powerful for green. So, this gives him the easy clear to my Chapil. He could actually just honestly clear my unison here as well with all the tokens he can spam off of cooler. I believe he used the plus one effect to discard and draw two. Discarding Rebrian, that's obviously very powerful. A lot of synergy. He's going to go cooler into Bardock. Super combo offensively, get 25k. 30k. I really don't have the means of defending. I kind of do have the means of defending it actually. I can tap the leader, prevent him from warping me a card, and then combo a 5k. So, save the Bardock there. And I, I do want to save it because I want to uh, get my Celzino on board. So, that's important. He's going to go 15k into Bardock. He really wants Bardock off the board. He must be re he might be reading the Celzino coming. But he's going to combo a lot of cards into it. Yeah, he does get it, but combos a lot of cards into it. Unbeknownst to James, he could have just comboed 5k and it would have died, but he really wanted to ensure that it would die. So he's going to use the plus one effect by placing a copy of Cooler underneath another copy of Cooler. I'm basically deciding here, how can I get my Celzino into play? The way my energy is looking right now, it doesn't seem like it can happen. Like, 
if I was charging my sixth, I could have played the double Bardock and then played another two drop with Unon Assemble, but I just don't have enough energy to do that. I believe James is at two life here, though. So Celzino might not be needed at this point. Unfortunately, Untapped does not readily tell us how much life we're at unless you hover over the amount. So we got Gogeta going in at Frieza. Yeah, I'm pretty sure James at two life at this point. I'm swinging at his battle cards and his unison just to get my double striker on the board. And James concedes when I get the Bardock on the board because he was at two life and no cards to defend. So that was the gameplay there. I think it was a pretty close match. I mean, we were very close in parity the entire time. Very close in hand sizes and, and board states. So very, very cool game. Cooler is a very insane card. I think Raditz is a good leader for mono green. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.